All right, well, let's go over the uh, notes on Newton's second law. Welcome to the next chapter. In the last chapter, we talked about Newton's first law of motion. And in Newton's first law of motion, that was the law of inertia. And the base law of inertia is that an object at rest is going to stay at rest. And an object in motion is going to stay in motion. All right, the way in which I like to describe that is an object's going to do what it's doing. It's just going to keep doing it, okay? So if an object is just sitting there, if a bowling ball is just sitting in one spot, that's what it's going to do. It's just going to stay sitting there unless somebody does a force on it. Somebody picks it up, somebody pushes it, somebody does something to it, then it's going to all of a sudden accelerate and do something. Right? Or if you roll the bowling ball down the alley, it's going to keep going and going and going until another force acts upon it. It runs into some bowling pins. It runs into the back of the alley. If friction occurs between the bowling ball and the ground to cause it to slow down and finally stop, right? If none of those were occurring, we are in outer space, then that bowling ball would go and go and go and go and go forever. And it would never, ever stop. Right? That's what Newton's first law says. And that was in the last chapter that we just got done with. Now in this chapter, we're gonna look at Newton's second law. Right? And Newton's second law of motion says, According to your notes, a net force acting on an object causes the object to accelerate in the direction of the force. All right. Now, what does that mean? So let's go outside and play kickball. All right. The ball is just sitting there. All right. According to Newton's first law of motion, the ball is going to sit there, it's going to sit there, it's going to sit there, it's going to sit there. It ain't going to do nothing until another force acts upon it. All right. So let's exert another force. Now, this is Newton's second law. You come up and kick the ball. All right. If you kick the ball, you're exerting a force upon it. And when you exert a force on that ball, the ball is going to accelerate. It's going to speed up in the direction of the force. You kick the ball, and the ball goes goes taken off flying in that direction. Huh, isn't it amazing? This guy became famous according to that. That if you kick a ball, it's going to go in the other, it's going to go in that direction. But that's what Newton's second law is. All right. So um, another thing is a car. If a car gets hit by another car, all right, so you got, you're sitting there in the middle of the intersection, another car comes up, boom, hits you, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. But what's your car going to do? Your car is all of a sudden going to go, going to take off in that direction. Oh, hold on. All right, so, so if, if one car hits another car, when that car hits another car, the other car is going to take off in the other direction, right? And that's all because of Newton's second law. That when a force is exerted on an object, then that object is going to accelerate in the direction of that force. All right. So now, letter C, it says this is affected by two different things. Number one, the size of the force. So let's go back to the idea of the kickball. Right. If you go up and kick the ball and you go pink and kick it just really, really lightly, is the ball going to take off like crazy way out in the outfield? No. It's going to go boom, 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 boom. That's about it. All right. Why did it do that? because you only exerted just a little bit of force on it. A little bit of force means a little bit of acceleration, right? And it just goes a little ways. Now the reverse of that, you're playing kickball and you kick it as hard as you can. Now what's the ball gonna do? It's gonna take out, go flying all the way out in the outfield of the, of the uh, diamond where you're playing at, right? Why? Because you, you exerted a big force, you exert a big force on it, then it accelerates a whole bunch and it takes off in that direction. All right, so that's the first one underneath there. It says larger force, more acceleration. You give a little bit of force, little acceleration. All right, second one, mass of the object. All right, let's go outside. We're going to play kickball again, but this time we're going to play with a bowling ball. Oh my word, that's not going to be very fun, all right? Because you, even if all we did was just set the bowling ball there, you go up and kick it with all your might. The unfortunate thing is you're probably going to break your foot, all right? Because that object because it has so much mass it takes a whole bunch of force in order to get it to finally take off and our leg is probably not going to tolerate the amount of force that we need to exert on that bowling ball in order to get it to go out into the outfield right so really big mass requires a whole lot of force right so you know instead in the case of that bowling ball we'd have to use something like a cannon which is going to have a whole bunch of force in order to finally get that bowling ball to take off and go in the opposite direction right so, so that's this concept behind the idea of force causes acceleration of an object. So that takes this letter D, an equation. There's an equation that goes with this, and that is force equals mass 
times acceleration. So in order to figure out that force that's needed, we gotta take the, hold on. Right, well, in case you're wondering, I know on your, on your side of the video, it didn't take very long, but on my side, that was a little while. What it was, was I'm doing this during school and we just had a change in classes and the music was going off. So I paused the camera for a minute while the music was going off so we didn't have that in the background. So that's why I'm, there's like these little blips in here. All right, well, before we had that, we were talking about the equation, force equals mass times acceleration. So if there, that object, that bowling ball, has a certain amount of mass, so it's going to take a certain amount of force in order to get that object to accelerate in that direction. Versus if we play with a regular kickball, it's got a smaller mass, well then there's a smaller amount of force in order to get that object to accelerate in the other direction. And we can calculate that using force equals mass times acceleration, or F equals M times A. And that's the other piece that's in your notice notes, is F equals M times A. All right, so now, if we use the Newton for force, um, kind of ironic that in order to, when you do calculate force, the unit for that is the Newton. All right, they named it after Sir Isaac Newton, the guy that came up with all these laws. All right, what is that? Well, that amount of force needed to accelerate one kilogram and get it to accelerate up to one meter per second per second or per second squared. All right, so what is that? Roll an orange across the floor. Not really flash, fast, just take it, roll it across the floor. And that's about one Newton. All right, that's what one Newton of force would be equal to. So if you're going to exert two Newtons of force, then it's like taking two oranges and rolling them at the same time across the floor. Gives you a little uh, idea as to how much force a Newton really is. So again, the units for that is it's one kilogram for one meter per second squared, all right? Because if you think about the equation, the one kilogram, that's the mass, and then the one meter per second square, that's the acceleration. We're multiplying those two together, all right? All right, well, that concludes our notes on the second law. So with that, we're going to have another, we're going to have an activity that we're going to do online. So we'll talk to you later. See you.